church. So this is the rapture. This is where we're going to be going. Anybody else going to go with me? Yeah. Thank you all. One, two, three. Thank you all five of you. I don't know about the rest of you, but I just saw five hands go up. This is where we're leaving. Now, this is what I'm talking about right now. This is what I'm teaching. This seven-year period right here. And we're starting with the horsemen, the four horsemen. And it talks about the seals that were opened in the book of Revelations. Why are we teaching this? The Lord spoke to me about the times that we're living on today. El Señor me habló acerca de los tiempos que estamos viviendo hoy. We know that it's not going to get any better. Amen? Amen. It's getting hard. Yes. Matter of fact, we had the, the, the attack in Paris uh, this past Friday. And in case you didn't know, there was about to be another one today. But they got caught. They got caught today. And they had this lady that was a suicide bomber, a mujer, had all these explosives in. She rushed towards the police officers and pulled on that belt, whatever it is that they pulled on, and she just exploded right there. And the good thing about it is that they were able to catch everybody. They were able to, you know, uh, grab a hold of whatever it was, because if not, it would have been another one of these massacres. Don't know how many. The plane that uh, from Russia, they showed today the bomb that was used, and ISIS is claiming that they're the ones that are responsible for this. So, why are you telling us all this, Pastor? Because it's getting worse. Amen? Amen. So, we talked about the white horse coming in and bringing peace. He's only going to bring peace, if you go back into, into that picture, he's only bringing peace for three and a half years. Three and a half years, the first three and a half years, it's going to be temporary peace. This is where the Antichrist, amen, when the rapture happens, there's going to be a lot of chaos. Cuando sucede el rapto, va a haber bastante destrucción. There's going to be a lot of chaos. Why is there going to be a lot of chaos? Because there's going to be people on the road that are Christians that once the trumpet sounds, they're going to be gone. So who's going to be driving the car? There might be uh, pilots that are Christians flying that plane and that trumpet sounds and what happens? No. That autopilot can only go so far, right? So, there's going to be total destruction, there's going to be a lot of chaos, va a haber bastante destrucción, and we know that there, somebody has to rise up to come and try to bring peace to the situation, and this is where the Antichrist comes in and brings temporary peace, and we found that in chapter, uh, again, 6, verse 1 and 2. Now, we're on, the, on the, uh, the red horse right now. This is what we talked about, and we started that last week, which is verse 3 and 4 of that same chapter. And we said, as we read it, if you go with me to uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 2, I mean, 3 and 4, and it says like this, When the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living, living creature saying, Come. Then another horse horse came out, a fiery red horse. Its rider was giving, listen, it was giving power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. To him was giving a large sword. We read this, we brought a little bit about uh, this red horse, and I'm going to give you part two today on the red horse. The other part number two. El caballo rojo. Now, one thing that we have to understand, and we just read it in scripture right now, and I'm going to read it again. Verse 4 says, Then another horse came out of it, fiery red, and its rider, listen, was giving. Somebody gave this red horse, or this rider, authority. Amen? It was giving power to take peace from the earth, and to make men slay each other, and then it was given, again, a large sword. The question is, who granted that authority? And who gave them the authority to, or who has the authority to give this, this man a crown? And on top of that, give him the authority and give him a sword. Does anybody know who is the one that gave him authority? Jesus gave him authority. Jesus 
gave him the authority. Amen? Because Jesus is the only one that has power over death and Hades. And when we consider Jesus Christ being the king or the ruler of kings, found in Revelation chapter 1 verse 5, that's how we know that Jesus is the one that gave authority. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 says this, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from, dead, from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Who is it? Jesus. Jesus is the only one. Jesus also holds the keys to Hades and death, found in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. That's why you gave me my descriptions, because I want you to see it, that it's in the Bible, and I'm not telling you this. I am, verse 18 says, I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. He has the power and the authority. He gave this power and this authority to these writers. Amen. 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 Now, it says that Jesus was also in between the four living creatures that kept on telling John, come and see. Amen. That is found in Revelation chapter 5 verse 6. And I know I didn't give you scriptures over there, but I'm, I'm sorry. 5, 6 says, Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain. Who was slain? Jesus. And what was he called? He was the lamb of... Then I saw a, a, he was being slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living, living creatures and the elders. Jesus Christ was in between these creatures. He's the one that gave the power. He's the one that gave the authority. You might say, why would Jesus give such authority to these people to do so much harm? Because right now, Jesus is giving us the opportunity to accept him. Jesus nos está dando ahorita la oportunidad de aceptarlo. So if you do not accept Jesus Christ, then you have to pay the consequences. Say amen, somebody. Are you still here? So, he gives us this, this, this time. We're in, we're in the, remember, we're in the church era. And that's why right now we tell all the people that salvation is totally free. You don't have to pay nothing for it. It's free. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So it's free. Now, after the rapture comes and you say, guess what's going to happen? What is ISIS doing right now? He's beheading people. They're beheading people. So that's the only way you're ever going to survive if you stay here. But I don't want to stay here. I don't want to see any of those four horsemen. Amen? Amen. So we, Jesus has given us the, 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 the opportunity to accept him right now. While we can. The Bible says, while he may be found. Amen? Amen. Because right now you can, you can search for him and you'll find him. Ahorita puedes buscar al Señor y lo puedes encontrar. But there's going to come a time, look at your neighbor and say, there's going to come a time where he's going to be no more. Mm -hmm. So, tell your neighbor, you better act right. Come on, tell him again, you better act right. Now look at the one on the other side, tell him, you better act right too. So, this, this red horse was giving authority. It was given authority, amen. What was it given authority? Now, now understand something. The, the white horse came in and brought peace. The white horse came in and brought peace. Now here comes the red horse. And what does he do? He takes peace away. Remember, we read it in Revelation. It says to him was given power to take away the peace. So he comes and shatters the peace that one was given to us. But they're only coming in to give you peace just to draw you near. You know how you do to the dog or to, or to a little child that doesn't want to get close to you? What do you do? You bribe that child by how? You give them candy. You show them money. You show me a $20 bill. Yeah, I'm going to get close to you to try to get that $20 bill. Amen. Come on, somebody. So what the Antichrist did is he used peace, temporary peace to, to drive or to bring people to him. Because once he had them in there... Because we do this with animals that we want to try to catch. We try to feed them and get them as close as we can. And then we catch them without them knowing. 
This is the same thing the enemy was doing with the people that stayed after the rapture. Lo mismo que hizo el enemigo. He's bringing this temporary peace and people are saying, well, this is the Christ, all right? So people are coming. And as people get real close and very comfortable, then here comes the red horse. Mm. So the red horse comes in to, sh to shatter peace and bring war. Viene a destruir la paz y a traer guerra. Now the number two thing that he does is he brings strife. He brings strife, civil war, international conflict. That's all we have today, right now. Right? We have a lot of strife. And maybe we don't have to go outside of the United States. We don't have to go outside of this strife in our own home. Civil war. Conflict. There's a lot of these things, and, and cannot, mind you, the red horse has not shown up yet. And right now, people are crying, and, 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 and not, not, I don't want to sound mean, but people think that this is worse. This is, man, it's bad right now. This is nothing compared to what's going to happen when that red horse comes. Yeah. It's going to be bad. Look at your neighbors and it's going to be bad. Anybody staying? It's going to be bad. You, you think right now is bad? You ain't seen nothing yet. The third thing that the enemy brings, this red horse brings, is human slaughter. Red is the color of sin, but also red is the color of bloodshed. There's going to be a lot of blood shed when this red horse comes in. A lot. Church, this is this is serious. This is not a game. This is not a, 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 a you know a a, a a fantasy. No, this is this stuff is real. This is stuff that churches don't want to preach right now because they don't want to hurt people's feelings. But my job is to tell you the truth because the Bible says that the truth will. I can either keep you in bondage or get you free. My job is to be able to give you the word so that the word can work in your life so that you can be free. Amen. Free from what? Free from that. Amen? Because you, you need to go with God. Amen. So the, the, the red is a symbol of sin. And we find that in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. For the sake of, for the sake of time, we're not going to read that. It's also a symbol of blood. The Bible says that the sword in his hand represents war bloodshed, violence. It's a, it's a state of civil for, uh, power, like I told you. And it also represents division. The sword that was given to him represents division. And they said that it was a sword that one of the sword that the soldiers would use. <laughs> ISIS is doing a lot of beheading. A lot. And they're not scared. And they're not afraid. Why? Because they're faithful to their religion. They are faithful to their religion. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And can I tell you that the, 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 the Christians uh, back in the day, they used to go through a lot of persecution because of the Roman Empire. The church back then suffered a lot. La iglesia sufrió mucho. Por el Imperio Romano sufrieron bastante. They suffered a whole lot. Can I tell you that the church is still suffering today? When we may not be suffering like they're suffering, but I know they are in other countries where they're losing their life. Amen? So, Revelation chapter 6, verse 3 and 4, we parallel that to Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 and 7, which was our foundational scripture when we started in times. And I want you to put it up there, please. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 and 7. And this is Jesus when he's on top of the mountain and he starts, the, the disciples come up to Jesus and they said, okay, can you tell us when all these things are going to happen? Then Jesus comes in and begins to talk to them and it says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Don't we hear that all the time? Then friends just go bomb. They, they, sit, they, they uh, uh, delivered 20, 20 bombs to the Islamic uh, locations that they have. 20 bombs. Now, Russia 
is going to go try to do the same thing that Paris did, which is go and, and bomb every ISIS location that they know of. So there's wars, there's rumors of wars, all these things, and then it says, see, that ye be not troubled. So right now, we can't get troubled by all these things. And a lot of times we get troubled. We, we, we're scared. Right? We get scared. He says, be not troubled for all these things. For all these things that says must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Amen? Verse 7. For nations shall rise against nation, we see that. Kingdom against kingdom, we see that. And there shall be famine, we see that. We see pestilence, we see all of that. Earthquakes, we've seen a lot of those. And diverse, we, all these things are happening right now. But he said, it's not the... That means it's going to get worse before it can get any better. Can I get an amen? amen. Are, you guys, are, you, are you guys understanding this? Yes. Yes. Are you getting a grasp of it? So, what must I do for me not to go through all of this? Simple. Just accept Jesus, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And turn from your wicked ways. And serve Him. We're not, I'm not up here to, rep, to present to you a religion, but a relationship. Because everybody has religion. But very few have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And that's what I want to bring to you. A relationship with Jesus Christ. Now understand this. That when the angel breaks the second seal. And all these things happen. When once we are caught up. And we are in there. And they're not we. Sorry. Once people are in the tribulation period. All these things. The wars. Rumors of wars. The killing. All this thing is going to be common. It's going to be common. In other words, it's going to be like an everyday. It's, it's kind of like today, but it's going to be worse than today. Where it's just going to be common. Just people going to walk up to people and just start shooting, killing. And all these things are going to happen. <coughs> all the violence, all the things, it's just going to be normal. It is going to be normal. The, the, the peace that the Antichrist is bringing, it's only short-lived. In other words, it's only going to be temporary for the first three and a half years. Amen? For the first three and a half years, it's going to be temporary. And then, if all hell is going to break loose. If you go with me to Daniel chapter 8, verse 24 and 25. I'm going to try to get you out of here early. Amen? It's 10 o'clock, all right? I'll just play. I'll just play. I gotta make. I, I gotta, I gotta get, you, get you guys to laugh a little bit. Well, serious on me. If, if you got Christ, smile. You don't have to worry about going through all of this. And you might say, "Well, then why are you teaching us?" Because I know not a lot of them are gonna go. So they need to know what's going to happen. Amen. Maybe you repent. So uh, Daniel chapter eight, verse twenty-four. This, this is what it says. It says like this. He, who's still talking about, he's talking about the enemy, will become very strong. Not by his own power. He's talking about the Antichrist. Now, listen. The Antichrist is not the devil. The Antichrist is being used by the devil. He's only an agent. Okay? How, I'm going to put it to you this way. Okay? It's just, it's just kind of so that I can get you to understand. God has Jesus. That's his son. The Antichrist becomes like a son to the devil. Remember? Imitator. The devil's an imitator. So the Antichrist is not the devil. He is an angel. He is the son of the devil. Okay? So we have to understand this. It's not the devil. That's why it says that he has been given power. By who? Not by his own. The enemy gives him power to do certain things. We said that the Lord gave power to the horsemen, but the enemy is giving power to the Antichrist right here for him to do a lot of the stuff that he's going to do. Amen? So we have to understand this. He says, now by his own power, he will cause astounding devastation and will succeed in whatever he does. He will be destroyed. He will destroy the, might, the mighty men and the holy people. He's going to come in and he's going to I mean, do a bunch of mess. 
Amen. And there's not going to be nobody that's going to be able to stop him. Okay. We're going to get into some later on, some stuff later on that you're going to begin to see how they kill the Antichrist. Okay. They kill the Antichrist by a bullet in his head and he dies. Okay. He dies. Listen to this. And then he comes back to life. Yeah. Who came back to life? Christ. Christ. Imitator. Again. Mm -hmm. So now when he raises up to come back to life, he's coming back a lot worse than before he died. Mm -hmm. Because before he died, he was bringing peace. Right? Yeah. When he dies and he rises up, he's going to be worse than Hitler. 20 times worse. If you thought Hitler was bad, he's going to be twice as, 20 times worse than Hitler. Amen? So now, verse 25, he will cause deceit to prosper. He's a liar. He's lying to people right now. Say something, somebody. He's a liar. He's going to bring deceit. Amen? And he will consider himself superior. When they feel secure, when, listen, when people feel secure, real close to him, what is he going to do? When he feels himself superior, when they feel secure, he will destroy many and take him his stand against the prince of princes. Yet he will be destroyed, but not by human power. In other words, the one that's going to come and kill him is not going to be a human. It's going to be a Jew, a Jew sent by God. This is powerful. That's why I said, I don't want to be here to see all that stuff. I want to be enjoying heaven. Amen. I'll be walking on those streets of gold. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm going to be enjoying all the gold, and, and but most of all, enjoying Jesus Christ himself. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's what I want to do. So we see here that the enemy is coming, the Antichrist. And right now, he's trying to take so many people with him, amen, that he can to hell. And if you lend your ear to him, guess what? You're going. Mm -hmm. Quiet. Quiet now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quiet. Some of you need to tell that devil to get away from you. He ain't got no part in your life. Kick him right. up. Amen. Right. Kick him up. God is good. We don't, we don't have time to be playing around, church. There is no time to play around. Look at your neighbor and tell him, stop playing. Ain't nobody got time for this, right? I got bronchitis. I got bronchitis. Come on, y'all. You're making me get off the cross. Let me get off the cross. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. Listen to what it says. It goes back. Paul is speaking here. And listen to what Paul says. He says, while people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly. As labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. Now, we as men don't know what it is to go through labor pains. You pinch me right now, I'm going to cry. <laughs> we men don't know what it means to go through labor pains. I don't know what it means, but I know it hurts. Because you can hear people crying in pain. Just when they're going, they're having uh, uh, contractions. You can see them and they're like... Ehh. And, you know, you, my, my wife didn't go through this, but I know I've seen certain people that go through it, and, they, and, and they're going through something, and they try to be lovable with that, their wife or whatever, and then, you know, they call them all kinds of names and stuff like that, right? Get away from me, it's because of your fault. Well, you, you know, you pay a part of it too. Come on, somebody. And, you know, we don't understand these labor pains ourselves. Come on, somebody. So it says that it's going to be like labor pains. When they say peace and safety, this destruction will come that quick. And it will come, it says it will come suddenly as labor pains on the pregnant woman. And they will, who will not escape? The people that were left behind. 
are not going to escape. My goodness. My God. That is, I don't want to go through it. I don't want to go through this. Say amen, somebody. Amen. My God. So now he's given seven years to do his destruction. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, listen to what it says. He does peace treaty for seven years. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27 says, Where am I at? I don't want to pull my glasses. I want to be a big boy and look at these words. Okay, I want to pull them out. He will confirm a covenant with many for seven days. How many? Seven days. How much is seven days? Amen. Now, back then, back then, they will consider seven days as seven years. They will consider one day as one year, depending on what they were talking about. The seven days, and we see it here, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, seven days, seven years. And in the middle, in the midst of the week, in other words, in another version, another version of the Bible says, in the middle of the week. What is the middle of seven? How many? So the three and a half years, in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sac sacrifice and the ob oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of ab abomination, he shall make it. Desolate, even until the consummation, the consummation and that determination shall be poured upon the desolation. In other words, he's going to bring peace for seven and a half years. And then the remainder <coughs> three and a half of those seven years is going to be total chaos. That's it. This is where the black horse comes in. This is where the pale horse comes in that we're going to be talking about later on. Next week we start the black horse, which is famine, which is hunger. And it means a whole lot more. But you have to be here to hear that. But I'm here to tell you that the Antichrist is coming. And the Antichrist is going to come in and bring all these things. All destruction, war. What do we talk about? War, civil war, division, conflict. All these things are coming. They are coming, church, and they're coming stronger than ever. And I'm here to tell you that what we're seeing right now is just the beginning of what is to come after the judgment, after, after the, the rapture, I'm sorry, after the rapture. So we don't want to be here. Everything that ISIS is doing is compared to the people in the Bible. Everything they're doing. The flag, down to the flag and the colors of the flag and, and how they do things and how they, you know, I, I was reading uh, an article uh, of, of the, uh, of their, uh, I guess it's called the Quran and how, what it says for them to do and how they have to be so faithful to their religion and if not, you either get killed, either way you're going to die. Basically that's what they're telling them. Because you know what they tell them? You know why so many are dying? Because they're telling them that they're going to get about 70 concubines. Meaning, they're going to get about seven, seven, seven wives. You barely handle one of them. And you want to get 70? <laughs> I'll leave it at that. So, they're coming in and they're, 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 they don't care. Now, can I tell you that Everything that they're doing, and then started, I started thinking about how, you know, how are they doing all these things? How are they doing all these, you know, uh, because back then in the Bible, it was totally different than it is now. Back then in the Bible, they didn't have the technology that, that, that you know, uh, we have now. And, and, and I started, you know, reading some of the things of how, how does ISIS get funded? Because they're going to try to come in and try to take over. They say, we're going to go in and take over our land. They're going to come in and try to take over. Amen? But can I tell you something? You know, you know why all, all this hell has not broken loose? And I told you this before. You know why all these things have not broken loose yet? It's because the Holy Spirit is not letting them yet. Because the Lord's still here. 
And he said, none of this can happen because I'm still here. And my people cannot go through that stuff. He said, once that my people go, Holy Spirit is going, there's going to be total chaos. Amen? So can you give God praise for the, for the Holy Spirit that is not allowing the enemy to come in and do anything to you? The Holy Spirit is, is holding back everything. Say, so you can't touch my children. The Bible says in Psalms 91 that no arrow shall come nigh. Day or night, they shall not come. If you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you'll abide under the shadow. Amen? If you abide under His shadow, there ain't no dark that can come. There ain't no fiery dark that can come at you. Because the Lord will say, Ah, you can't touch him. Can't touch my son. Can't touch, you know? The MC Hammer can't touch. Yeah, I don't know MC Hammer, right? I know him. Yeah, can't touch this. I would do the dance for you, but I got boots on and I'm not sliding around. I'm probably just fall. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is coming in and saying, You can't touch him. You can't touch her. You can't do this to them. You cannot touch. You have to go for me. And I'm here to tell you that the minute that the enemy sees the Holy Spirit or the blood, say the blood. The blood. Mm, he'll remember that blood. Yes. He'll remember that blood that was shed on that cross. Yes. That's why the Lord yes. told uh, Moses, tell him to put blood on the doorpost. Why? Because the minute that death sees it, it says, oh, I remember that one. Yes. Hallelujah. My God. Amen. Woo. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the blood. I said, thank you for the blood. Amen. Thank you for the blood that it does not lose its power. My God, my God, my God. Whew. Man, I see a red horse sometimes. I said, Lord, I know you're not here yet. I don't see nobody riding that horse. <laughs> but I was looking into some of the things that ISIS and Holly get, and, 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 and I'm not going off, but I just want you to see how powerful they are and why they do what they do and why they kill what they kill because when they decide to take over something, they're going to take over. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The, 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 the oil fields. They have came in and took it over Syria and Iraq and, Iraq and took in the oil fields. Mm. Amen. Mm. And they came in to do, to do this. <laughs> they have taxation. Now, if you go to Mexico, the cartels in Mexico, they're doing this where you have to pay them. You don't pay the government. You pay them taxes. Mm -hmm. And if you don't pay them taxes... That's it. Either you business, you don't have a business no more, or you don't have life. You choose. So the terrorists, the, the ISIS, they come in and they begin to get taxes away from people because they have land. Amen. They do it. They get money through kidnapping for ransom. Thirty-five. Listen, thirty-five to forty-five million dollars a year they get from kidnapping. They pay these people. They pay these people's family. This, 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 these, uh, the, uh, the suicide bombers. They pay the teachers to teach the children how to fight when they're young. They have schools where they're getting their funding, all these things. They pay, listen, the terrorists that come in to come and harm people, they get paid more than the government gets paid. So you see, money talks. <coughs> money talk. if you're getting paid more than the, the, the government you're going to go for whatever it is depending on, especially if you're in a situation where you need finances come on somebody they get fun, fun, uh, 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 donors wealthy people from Saudi Arabia they get people that come in and give them money, donate money for what they're doing they know how to run this thing. You might think that the, you know, the enemy is very smart. He's very intelligent. But he's not smarter and wiser than my Lord. Amen. Come on, somebody. He, he, he's not wiser. He's not more. Uh, he, he, he's wise, but not as much as the Lord. The Bible says that God has the ultimate wisdom. That's what he said. Ask. Wisdom. Why? Because he doesn't want us to perish. He said that my people perish for lack of knowledge. Amen. So, one thing that I want you to understand is that the red horse is bringing war and blood. And either you can stay here and wait to find out how much damage he's going to do, or you can just say, I don't know, forget about that. I'm going with it. I'm waiting for the trumpet to sound. I'm waiting for Anybody else waiting for the trumpet to sound? Amen. I'm waiting for that trumpet to sound. 
I'm not going to stay here. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I, I got my ticket. Anybody has a ticket? Thank you all for it. You probably need to fix it. But what does the ticket look like? His name is Jesus. You accept him in your heart. You tell him to come in and change your life. Change my life. Because I don't want to change your life. Amen. Church, we don't have time to play around. So many people are playing around. So many people are not even taking it serious. So many people are doing their own thing. They're living their own life. Not even knowing things. I tell you that a lot of people, and maybe people in church, don't even know anything about this. They don't. And it's going to be sad that day. Jesus said, in that day, what day? That day. Things are going to happen. Worse things. But we will not be here. Amen. 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 So listen, church. I don't know where you're at right now. But I think that what we need to do... <coughs> excuse me. I think that what we need to do right now is we really need to examine ourselves. Oh, hallelujah. Because he said... He's coming for a church yes. without spots or wrinkles. Right. What do you mean the church? He's not, not, the church is not the building. You are the church. Yes. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. So if there's anything in you that is not supposed to be in it, then I think we got to get things right with God today. Amen. 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 That's right. Because the trumpet to sound right now and that seven year period and that white horse will be coming down maybe it'll sound right as soon as you walk out of this door we don't know but I can guarantee you something that's going to happen and the saddest thing would be is you knowing about God and you knowing about this and still staying here I believe that what I'm doing today it's kind of like, <coughs> excuse me, it's kind of like an amber alert. There's a sound, there's a warning going out to all humanity. And saying, the Bible says that Jesus is closer yeah. than we once believed. Yeah. He's close. He's real close. That trumpet is real close to sounding. My question to you is, where are you going to be when that trumpet sounds? How is your life going to be? The Bible says that there's a heaven and there's a hell. There's two places you can go. Pastor Lynn and myself were out here yesterday, Monday. We're doing drop through prayer Monday. And it was still dark. And had a guy was coming and uh <coughs> it wasn't a motorcycle, it was kinda like a uh, moped I guess. But he was passing by and we did what we always do, just wave at them. And he was looking at us as he was driving by and then he came back young man probably maybe in his 30s I want to say and he stopped took out his helmet and he said you know I stopped by here because you told me hi and I said with myself well who's this guy telling me hi he don't even know me he said, but when I passed, he said, I heard a voice said, go back and talk to him. And when he came back, he goes, you might not know this. He said, but I was about to end my life right up here. There was an 18 wheeler coming. And I said, you know what, why live? He said, I, and I was going to pull my motorcycle to the left. And I was going to hit that 18 wheeler head on and just end my life. <coughs> Because I'm tired. He said, but I didn't. 
And I don't know why it didn't. And I was coming just thinking about all of that. He goes, and then I passed by here and you're telling me how you don't even know me. And he began to let out everything that he had inside of him. And I asked him this question. I said, if you take your life, then what? Where's your soul going? Heaven or hell? I said, because the Bible says that only God has the power to give life and take it away. And we stayed there. We ministered to him, Pastor Lynn and myself, and believed that the words that were spoken over his life are making an impact in his life because he is in a bad situation. He did 20 years straight in prison and everything that he's going through. But the word, the seed that was sown into his life, I believe, that he's not going to go through because I bound, I, I came in and I said, I bind that spirit of suicide Amen. and we remove it off of your life. Wow. Thank you, Lord. When he left, I believe I told Pastor Lynn, I said, can you imagine how many people are passing by there with the same thought of just ending it all? One of the famous Mexican singers said that the world is going down while the church is fighting, complaining, murmuring, talking about each other, gossiping, and all this other stuff. And people are going to hell. People are dying. We, the vision every time, we are going to be held accountable for the people that are around us. Well, God, I didn't have time. Once you go before the throne of God, you will not have an excuse. Their excuses will be up. My question to you is, what are you going to hear? Depart from me, I never knew you, or enter into your father's house. I think that it's time that we stop. David said, the psalmist David said, Lord, Touch my heart. And whatever's in there, wash it. <clears throat> so he said, wash it. And he used this with the soap, it's called his soap, or whatever you want to call it. Meaning scrub it all off, even if it hurts. But I want to be right with you. Because at the end of the day, nobody knows what tomorrow holds. Right? We're here today. We're gone tomorrow. The Bible says it's like a flower. A bloom and all of a sudden it's out. What would happen if you don't open up your eyes tomorrow? Where would you be? Where would you open up your eyes? I think it's time that we search ourselves and our hearts. And we're not asking, and I know that he's not asking for perfection, because we're all sinners. The Bible says that we have fallen short of the glory of God, and that every day we sin. We sin with our eyes. We sin with the words that we speak. We sin with actions. Amen? So we have to come to him daily and say, God, I'm sorry if I've offended you, but sin, sometimes we do it unknowingly, sometimes we do it knowingly. Amen? So, I want us to take a moment, right there where you're sitting now. So I want you to take a moment and close your eyes. And I want you to search yourself right now, your life. If you know that in you there's stuff that shouldn't be there, or maybe you messed up,
you know your life better than anybody. You, you're not going to lie to nobody other than yourself. But I want to tell you something, that there's somebody up in heaven that knows your life better than you know it. So as you search within yourself and you begin to look at your life and where you're at right now, what season of your life you're in right now, and what you're going through, I think that it's time that we make peace with God and with ourselves. And the hurt and the pain. And I don't know if we're, if we're still live streaming, but if we're still live streaming, I, I want to let you know if you're looking, you're watching through the internet right now that this is also for you. This is also for you if you are going through something. If you, I want you to search yourself right there in your living room, in your room, wherever you're at, that you're watching us. I want you to examine your life because I think that this is this is serious. The Lord can come at any moment. And if He comes and you stay, you're going through the seven year, seven year period that the Antichrist is going to rule. The Bible says for seven long years. So after you examine your life, and you want to get things right with God, I think this is a perfect opportunity for us to do this. Once you examine your life, once you search yourself, I'm going to ask you this question, if you want to get things right with God, all I want you to do is right there where you're at. I want you just to raise your right hand and say, Pastor, that's me. I, I, I got some, I got some stuff. I got some issues that I, I need to. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. Just, just keep it up. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You know your life. You know where you're at. The time is now, the Lord said. He told Zacchaeus, so salvation has just came into your house. Today is the day of salvation. The Bible says, don't, let, don't leave for tomorrow what you can do today. So those of you that, that lifted up your hand, and make this invitation. The Lord says that if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father. I'm going to ask you to step out of your seat and just come and meet me right here in the front and just come and stand in front of me and just face me as I guide you into, into the Lord's prayer and, and begin to get, take the first step in getting things right with God. Come on. Those of you. I'm going to take my time. Those of you. We're going to do a corporate prayer right here with you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm going to give you a little bit of time to stand right there. Anybody else? I'm going to give you time. But I'm not going to give you too much time. You know your life. I'm going to ask you guys to repeat this prayer with me. Just say, Dear Heavenly Father, I just come before your presence. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner.